Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome to my channel. My name is Albert and today I'm going to answer the question of whether or not I am in a cult. Uh, obviously, I don't think I am, but I do feel very strongly about certain things, uh, mostly Tesla, right? And recently, I've been reading a lot of Tesla headlines that I find pretty dumb. And the reason I made this video is because now I've been seeing a lot of uh, like these threads on Reddit where people are making comments about Tesla, which I think are just really dumb. And instead of replying to them and getting mad about it uh, in Reddit, I'm going to make a video here, which no one will see, but it'll make me, it'll make me feel better. Uh, I think it'll make me feel a lot better. Okay, so um, yeah, so real quick, I just want to kind of throw out there in, in, in terms of uh, whether or not being in a cult, obviously that's a joke, but I just want to make sure that you know that I'm definitely not an Elon fanboy, right? I'm only very heavily invested in this because I have a lot of money in Tesla. Uh, I don't really idolize Elon uh, for anything other than I thought he's, he's doing a really good job uh, with the company. And I think actually a lot of stuff that he does, I think are really kind of productive as well to the company. Um, but I I just made a list of the last three people I, I quote unquote idolized, uh, which, I, which is not a lot, I don't think. But yeah, they've all turned out to be kind of a disappointment other than Jeremy Lin. Um, but yeah, so so like in 2020, Chamath came out on CNBC who was like, yo, we should just let these airlines, you know, go bankrupt and uh, we shouldn't bail them out. They did a stock buyback. And I was like, wow, this billionaire is like doing, he's like saying what is good for the people. Then later I find out like all the SPACs he's doing is like, he basically promotes a SPAC and he will actually uh, just like sell out of his shares, you know, by the time it, it, it goes to the market. So he doesn't actually hold the shares through the market. So like he doesn't really care about the, the outcome. He just more cares about the SPAC getting the deal been getting done. So I was like, okay, all right, fuck this guy. And then Andrew Yang, obviously a big fan of him uh, when he was running for president. And then, um, yeah, man, I don't know. Something, something during the New York, you know, the whole New York thing, I think he just made a couple of missteps. And I don't know, I kind of lost interest. But Jeremy Lin, man, I hopped, I hopped on that Jeremy bandwagon really late, maybe like five years after Linsanity happened. But yeah, I've been a fan ever since. So um, yeah, big fan of him. Uh, I'm not sure why I made this slide. I just... Thought it'd be interesting, but I don't know. Now that I'm talking thinking about it, it's kind of a weird, really weird tangent. Uh, but okay, so back to the the whole thing with Tesla. Um, yeah, so the reason I want to make this video is because I'm reading a lot of these like comments about Tesla that are just plain wrong, like just so wrong. And then I think where it's coming from is just these headlines that are just really, really dumb and really not well researched. And I think that's a problem with like n like news. Uh, well, I don't know. So this is a problem with, that I have with news on Tesla. I'm not really that well read in other topics, so I'm sure this is happening in other, other areas as well. But like, when it comes to Tesla, like it's just like, man, I can just look at the headline and be like, okay, this is stupid. And the most recent one I've seen, which is which is like ridiculous to me, is like they're quoting Musk saying this interview, hey, uh, Berlin and Texas are like gigantic gigantic money furnaces, right? But all the headlines, and he literally does say that in this, in this interview, like he did in May, uh, with like the Tesla the Sil Tesla owners of Silicon Valley. If you read the inter if you actually watch the interview, it's really just about how he's trying to talk about how difficult manufacturing is, right? And now the headlines are saying, quoting him, literally he does say this, gigantic money furnaces. But and they're 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 saying it in such a way where like it's, it's, they make it seem like Tesla's gonna go out of business or something like that, right? And then that will trickle down to like all, like what people think about the company. But um, the thing is, like they just built these two huge factories. Obviously, the factories are losing money. Like that's I, and that's how it works, right? You you spend billions of dollars on a factory, and you have to ramp up production, right? You don't you don't start making profit on day one. So I mean, it's it's pretty obvious that's how business works. And I don't understand how this is even a news article. Um, and if just if I need to get reminded, like people are saying, oh, this is gonna run out of money. Like let me just kind of back up here and show you, uh, quarter one, quarter one, uh, financial summary, and you'll see here. In quarter one, one quarter, they made $18 billion in revenue, of which 20% operating margin, okay? So earnings came out to be around, what, like $3.3 billion, $3.7 billion, okay? And then free cash flow after capital expenditures, which I'm assuming that's where the, that's where the uh, factory expense takes place. They still have, they made $2.2 .2 billion of free cash flow. Um... So so, and I'm guessing cash and cash equivalents is how much money they're holding. So they're holding $17 billion. So 
I'm gonna throw that out there. They have a lot of money and they're making a lot of money. So anything you read on headlines actually I believe is incorrect. And if you just did a little bit of thinking, you would know that this is ridiculous, right? Uh, another thing that I saw recently, and I, I read this, what made me want to make this video is I read like eight people make this comment about how Volkswagen, Volkswagen said overtake Tesla. And Bloomberg comes out with this report where they supposedly estimate uh, every single company's like growth trajectory for the next f four years. And I don't know, man, I'm not sure how they did this, but it just seems kind of wrong to me. Uh, first of all, if you look at this orange bar, which is Tesla, they pretty much had them growing like the same amount volume, like between 2023, 2024, 2025. And uh, yeah, I don't think that's how it works because if you think about it just from like a logical perspective, they've just built two new factories, right? And those are going to come, those are going to come online. And as they come online, Essentially, that would double your production, right? You go from two to four factories, right? They're expanding Shanghai. That's going to grow as well. I think by the end of the by the end of the year, or for sure by like sometime in next year, they're all, they're already going to be at two million capacity. So, I, I'm pretty sure the numbers for 2023, 2024 are going to be a lot different than this. So, where do they get these numbers from? I don't really know. And why is it why is the growth like this? I don't really know. It's it's very easy to just see how this is not going to be the case without even looking at any any numbers at all, right? And then Tesla's own projections where they're going to grow 50% year over year. Like, this doesn't look like 50% growth to me. Um, and yeah. And then oh, another thing that I read all the time is like, oh, Tesla hasn't come out with a new, uh, new model. Yeah. Okay. And that's going to be and that's the argument for why they're not growing. Like, if you think about it, hey. If you have 50 models, it's going to be very hard to manufacture all those models and keep up, especially in an environment where you already don't have that many supplies. I don't think why people think, oh, Volkswagen's got 50 models, like that's going to help them sell more cars. Like that doesn't actually equate, right? It makes a lot, if you just have one car, you build it really well, or two cars, three cars, you build them really well, you're able to scale a lot faster because you can build a lot more of them because you don't have to have all these different types of manufacturing to fit each 50 different cars, right? I mean, that just makes sense to me. I don't know. I'm not really sure what the logic is behind that. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of stuff going around where I don't think people are really thinking things through. So yeah, I just want to throw this out there. If you're thinking about investing in Tesla, I mean, just, you know, if you read these headlines, you're like, oh my God, this doesn't make any sense. Uh, it's cause it doesn't. So yeah, hope this helps. And yeah, man, uh, I don't know. Like and subscribe, I guess. Talk to you soon. Thank you.